as I was saying, everyone, welcome back to this Bravely Default Any Person tutorial, fifth video for Chapter Four. Chapter Four is not that hard, except for two bosses that are very RNG dependent, being that they are random. The very first thing we need to do is to beat that ice golem that you see just beneath me. So if you have everything equipped correctly, as I stated on the end of the chapter 3 video, you can directly go in front of them, save, because you might have to reset, and then engage the fight. If you do remember from the previous videos, we've picked up two gold hourglasses at any at two random spots of the game. So use one with Idea, then default and default with Ringabel, uh, with uh, Tiz and Agnes, and use the second gold hourglass with Ringabel. Um, stop is very effective against this boss, but it can, however, only last for the turn where you use the item, and it will be able to move on the next turn. If he is stopped, good for you, go ahead and spam the fires on your whole party with all three black mages, as you are already used to do. And ending by four reflex with Rindabell. And he will die on the very next same turn, rather. This is the reason why we equipped the fire rods. Because he's weak to fire. And also because the, the, right after this section, we will be grinding. And uh, we'll be grinding using fire. So we are actually going to keep all of those fire rods equipped. Then go towards the town, there's one cutscene to skip, and you can finally enter Eternia. Couple of other cutscenes to skip. Um, you'll now want to head to the medical facility that is on the the north side of town and go and speak with Adia's mother. Some cutscenes to skip once again. And you will be automatically put outside. Very first thing you want to do is to go to the weapon shop and sell every single g you well actually you only have the gill hairpin to sell since every other thing you want to keep and sell the turbo ether as well then go to the magic shop and buy fire rug only fire rug you won't need anything else then go to the item shop and there's a couple of things you want to check check that you have at least four expulsions. Buy two extras just for safety. Put yourself with a few more Phoenix Downs. Uh, buy Antidotes. I should have four right now but I used some so I'm going to buy a few extras as well. And that's it. Now you'll want to go to the inn and sleep. Now back at the weapon shop, you can, if you want, buy an adamant bangle. That will highly boost your HP uh, on idea. But there is a possibility that you will drop um, uh, another amulet on the next boss fight, so it can happen. Dragon. So we're going to put, as I said, 
Well, let's try 100%. Thermos sandals. And start walking. So this is the fight you actually want to get. With there's one more fight that is actually better, but this is the second best. This is the worst fight, however. And I had the bad luck of actually uh, them having a free turn, but I still survived, so this is good. Put yourself back to full health whenever possible. Oh my god, fucking bears. What you want is to reach 2800 GP on all your black mages before reaching the dragon. This is the best fight you can get. There you go. A lot of GP on this fight. Do not yield the poison immediately because you do want to take the damage. It doesn't really matter. Keep going, you still want to farm. So, pay attention once again to Agnes' MP. As you can see right now, she's about to run out of MP, so... We're going to cure. And use an elixir on her. We're actually going to get another elixir later, so we don't really care about using one. Then, keep grinding. I'm at 2650, so I only need 150 more. One more fight, and I'm done. And there we go. So now I can go and fight the dragon, turn the battles off, and give the sandals back to Ring a bell, take the poison off, and fully heal. Then, go and fight the dragon. Spam that raise. So as you can see, I'm going to get 660 GP because uh, I wasn't touched. And that will allow me to reach level 10 on my Black Mages. Level 10 gives you magic attack plus 20%. And you need this for the next boss. Then do one final cure and start walking towards the castle. There's two cutscenes to skip here. I'm sorry about the uh, reset, but 
at least it made me confirm that if you kill the dragon, night falls automatically, so it's actually way better to farm on your way to the dragon. As night doesn't fall, so I'm actually going to change my notes and put this here, so there. So, once you're inside the castle, equip the ice rods back, so just press optimum on all three characters. Check your abilities, you should have damage dispersion, silence immunity, and M attack 20% up on all three black mages. And on your white mage, you have angelic war, damage dispersion, silence immunity, and magic defense 10% up. Your battle should be off, and you're ready to go, so just save. This is another safety save that I actually do in the run, even though the next fight has a very low percent chance of actually resetting. So, how do we kill those guys? Very easy. You just Lazara on all your characters with all black mages and cast reflect with ring bell on all of them. The only reason that you might reset is if Victoria starts with Corvus. If she, if she doesn't, you can just press Auto and keep going with the fight. If she does this or as her first move, you can reset instantly. Because the reason is that Corpse kills you four turns after it's cast. And uh, for the speedrun strat on this fight, we actually do a full burst on the first turn and then press Auto. So that means that we will cast four turns of, uh, of moves and spells. And if I get Corpse on the first turn, I will actually die. So that means I will not have one of my characters for the next turns. So this is why here, everything is going fine. I'm reflecting, they're even throwing Dark and Holy, which damage themselves, ensuring that all of my spells will kill them after the end of those two turns. Victoria should die here. And now Victor after three more spells. And there you go. Very easy fight. And you get the extra amulet. You get two additional jobs, Arcanist, which in a normal playthrough sucks ass, but in the speedrun he's very useful because of his level 2 skill that we're actually going to get. So as soon as you're done with this fight, the very first thing you're going to do is to go on jobs and change everyone's job by going down to Arcanist, except on Agnes, so that's Idea, Tiz, and Ringabel. Then, go and equip, unequip the Irma Sandals, give them to Agnes, and put the battles to Max. Step outside the room because there's no encounters in the screen, and start finding an enemy. There's two set of enemies, so this right here is um, a mixed enemy, so it's not really good. What we're going to do is to default with all characters except Agnes, which will spam um, two Fyras and two Fandaras. 
on all foes. And that should get you read, I think. No, actually, no. Well, this fight is tricky because you're supposed to either get only wolves or only soldiers, and then there's the third possibility of getting them both. Let's try one Fandara. Wait. Let's try one Fandara, two Fandaras, and then global fires. See how it goes. And you have extra normally damage items, so you can just use them with Ring of Bell if you want. So here, just use the Arctic Wind. There we go. So that should give you on every Arcanist. So now do the exact same thing on the other order. So give Arcanist to Agnes and Black Mage to Tiz. Dia and Ring Bell. Then go on equip. Remove your mess sandals, give them to Tiz, put the amulet back, and do another fight. Okay, this is better, so this is in the wolf only fight. So you just spawn fire on them, and they will die. And boom! Dia gets, uh, Agnes gets level 2 as well. Now, go into tactics, turn off the battles, put Agnes back to uh, Black Mage. And very important, put Ring a Bell as a White Mage. Now, go to your abilities and take the magic defense 10% off and put Black Crescents. And then, here, take the silence immunity off and put black magic amp on all three black mages. You should now have an amulet on all your black mages and the force uh the Hermes symbol sorry on ring a bell. So you're now ready to fight the next boss. So go ahead Go to the marker, you will be into a set of events where there's some drama going on. Examine the door right here. Come on. Skip all of the kid scenes. And after this final cutscene where you'll see the uh, up into the prison, you'll be able to move again. So, right here, first go and pick Ring a Bell to the left. Then skip the cuts in then go to the right to pick up Agnes skip the cutscene as well and then go down to pick up Tiz the cutscene again and you're now going to do the final settings before the boss first go into tactics and sort put ring a belt in the top and the uh, to the bottom then go in your abilities and as a secondary job command you're going to put medication on everyone and that's all you need to do now make your way up to the stairs on the bottom right
and this is a tricky room. So go top left, then take the second to the second bottom side, then go left, then follow all the way to the right, then up, down, and to the gate. Skip those cutscenes. There will be more drama coming. And then take the stairs and you will be back at the entrance. From here, you'll want to go the exact same direction you tried previously, except the door will be open this time. And then turn right to reach the elevator. So, the reason why we ring bell as a white mage is fairly simple uh, this way I'm going first to explain where to go so first you want to go uh, yeah to the left and then to the left I was lost in my thoughts so first go to the center coming from the elevator then go upper left and then down you'll find a set of stairs then from here you'll want to go towards the center as much as possible and then go to the outer ring and keep following the path until the stairs. So the reason why we have Ringabel as a white mage is for him to be able to use both medication and the white mage spells because it will still need reflect. Uh, so this is the, actually the only fight where we switch him back to white mage instead of black mage. Afterwards, he'll be back to black mage. Then follow the outer ring and then go to the inner ring, just going in circles until you reach the safe point. Before you save, pick up the chest on the right side that contains an elixir, right here, and then save. Once again, this is a safety save, and also because the auto save will take you all the way back to the entrance of the room, so you don't want that. And now, let's go and fight Brave. So, Brave is a Templar, and his behavior is very, 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 very random. He does have somehow of a pattern, but he doesn't always act when he's supposed to. But, however, this is how you do the fight. You do medication compounding, and you combine an X potion with an high potion, and uh, you do that with all of your characters on themselves. What that does is it creates the font of life, which is basically an auto raise. Then you now want to default twice. And I do say twice. Now, you're going to go ham. So, you're going to cast Reflect on hold your party, as usual. Then, Black Magic, Blazara, as everyone has Ice Rods. And now you, however, will have the luck of him uh, not going into default, just like I did, or he will attack. Right now, is this is just a huge waste.
because it all goes on his defense and you will most likely kill someone on the next turn. This is why you actually get the the other rays. So right now we're gonna see if he indeed kills someone, so which he did. And we now have to wait for the end of the reflect. So we're going to put ourselves back to full health with potions if possible and use the compounding again on whoever lost their status. So priority obviously on Ring Bell. Wait, what did I do? There, on this turn I just lost my Reflect, so what I'm gonna do is do a double cure on everyone, and then default with all the rest. And now we will most likely Brave, so I'm going to Reflect, 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 and then go ham on him once again. This... It might be possible that he defaults, or that he doesn't, it's up to him, there's no way of telling if he will actually do so or not. You can actually check how much BP he currently has, if he has 2, he will most likely attack on the next turn. Yeah, yeah, this is just terrible. This is why he's such a troll, sometimes at 1 BP, he will. Attack. But now he didn't. Anyway, you can just auto for now because, as you saw, I broke I broke his first set of auto regen, which means he loses his default. Second one as well. Now he's going to go hammer, not killing anyone, and. I will finally kill him on this turn. So that was a very slow pattern because I first wasted everything on the default. But in the end, you catch, you can understand how it's, uh, how you are able to kill him using the auto rays, and why I actually ask you to get some extra eye potions and X potions to be able to do more than four fonts of life. I won't reset to show you other patterns because this is just random. You could use the Mega Elixir if you want, but I think it's a total waste. If you still have it, it's better to save it for Alternus. Either way, now that you're done with this, you're going to check your MP. As you can see right here, this is very very low, so we're going to give him some MP back. And same thing for the uh, you want everyone to have at least 120, uh, 150, let's say that's more safe. So just use your extra E first, then go to job. As I said, put ring a bell back to black mage, and also don't forget to give him white magic. Now, um. The equipments are correct, so just use your cure up, put everyone back to full health, and start going towards the Hearth Temple. So, the reason why you actually want to be safe on Brave and end as the final turn that you did being to cast Reflect with. Uh, ring a bell and casting the Blizzaras with your characters is because, much like with Behemoth, uh, not Behemoth, Shogmar followed by the Pirate, for the next boss, all we have to do is to press Y. So, once inside the Earth Temple, take the stairs immediately above you and take those stairs just to your right. Then, 
follow around this wall and start going towards the center and you will find another set of stairs. Take those as well and then go left and right here you'll find a dark shield. Immediately equip it on ring and bell and then start going toward the middle to find another set of stairs. From here it's only a one-way hallway to another set of stairs and from here all you have to do is to go left to reach the actual earth temple. Then simply go all the way around as any other temple and go straight to the boss. To fight Giga's Leash. So, as any crystal boss, you will obviously need to mash through the text before fighting him. So, as I said, all you need to do is to press X. Uh, why? And the boss will die. Very easy fight. So, final, well, not so final, fourth Mashing X session of the game. This one is actually a bit longer because you have to take down all the construction thingies out of the crystal first. And there we go, we restart the last crystal. So now we're going to, as always, use a TP stone. Go to the right and take this exit because this is the fastest way to actually reach your ship. Then, inside the ship you will get some cutscenes. As soon as they're over, press the autopilot and go to Florum. And go and heal yourself at the end. Because you're most likely out of MP and out of HP from the brave fight. Mostly MP, but you get the drift. As soon as you're done healing, go into your abilities. As you've just restored another crystal, you get an extra point. Put a bait fire and M defense back on Ringabel and then a bait fire on everyone. This is how your equipments should look like. As soon as you're done with this, call your ship once again, go autopilot to the wind temple 
at Arena. Then go a bit to the right, land as you can, as close to the mountains as you can, and manually save. This is the closest location to your next destination that you can save at, because trust me, you will need the save. So now go to the pillar, you have to mash through some text, and carefully accept the second option, not the first one, when Airy asks you, tell her you're ready. And from this point, you can now skip cutscenes again, until you face the boss. So the boss is Alternus, the Dark Knight. He has three attacks, while well, a fourth one a bit later into the fight, but we won't see it. The first one being a single physical attack, the second being Black Bane, which is a single target uh, attack um, that is Dark Elemental, and the Black Bane, which is exactly the same thing, but on all of your party. So for now, what we're going to do is to reflect, ring a bell, and just like for the um, uh, the fishy behemoth fight, we're going to single targetedly do a blizzara on ring a bell with all the other characters. So here's the black bane. I am very lucky that Idea is actually going to survive. And this is the reason why, if possible, you're going to keep your Mega Elixir. So just brave with Ring a Bell, cast the Mega Elixir, and cast the Reflex on all the rest of your party, and go ham on the Pizarras on all your party. So basically, this fight is the exact same as the Behemoth. Instead of Pandoras, you actually cast Pizarras. But it's the exact same pattern. So now all you want is for him not to use Black Bane again, and if he does, not kill anyone. Which he didn't, so that means that I've won. So this is a perfect fight right here. And there you go. So this was the final boss of the fourth chapter. It is also one of the most... Not hard, because once again, as you can see, I only take two turns to kill him, but just very difficult to actually survive against. Skip the next set of cutscenes and you will automatically end the chapter, reaching chapter 5.